All right guys, so I just at my brother's shop and they had this uh, 2001 Jeep Grand Cherokee uh, with a 4.7 that got towed in it for a no start and we gave it the classic whack on the bottom of the gas tank and it started right up. So uh, before we, you know, call the fuel pump, which we assume we already know what it is, uh, we're gonna grab our Pico scope and we're gonna get some uh, waveforms of a known bad fuel pump. So you guys can see what that looked like. I suspect it's missing you know, a big segment in the commutator on the pump. Uh, we checked it several times, shut it off, started off, wouldn't start, I have to get another smack on it, and away we go. So uh, let's grab our Pico and I'll show you how to do that. So we've got our uh, Pico over here up and running. I grabbed our AM clamp. Of course, I grabbed the Pico scope. And uh, this one's gonna be pretty easy because over here in the fuse box, we can see that we've got a dedicated uh, fuel pump fuse here, number 24. So that's that little fella right there. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll put a loop in there, and the cool thing about the Pico, I think they call it their advanced kit, or their, I can't remember exactly what kit, I'll, I'll post that in the description, I'll post a link to that, is in with all the goodies there, they've got these fuse jumpers, which is pretty handy for doing amperage draws. They've got other ones too, various sizes for uh, ATC fuses, I think there's one for a maxi fuse, I can't, I can't remember. But it comes with a couple, so it keeps us from using the uh, homemade ones that we typically do. So what my anticipation is, I've already got a, a 20 amp fuse in, inside of this one. I don't, want to, I don't want the car to stall, so hopefully we can yank that fuse out without it landing on a dead spot and shove this one in uh, quickly and then get our reading. running so it must be we didn't end up on a dead spot. I just don't want to risk shutting it off because uh, I had the guy that works with my brother to drive it up here and I don't want to have to call him to have it towed back. Uh, so let me get you guys set up here so we can see we can see this hopefully. Take our amp clamp. We've got it on a, uh, a 20 amp setting. Uh, we've got our Pico scope set up here. We'll set that on a 20 amp scale. I'll set this on the tray here so it doesn't shake around so much. Right, so we'll take this, cut that on, I'm gonna make sure we zero it, hook it around there. And that lady is your problem. Uh, we can see, let's get a, uh, real quick, we'll set up a trigger here so you can get back to work. Oops. Where'd my trigger go? There she is. Yeah, we'll, we'll set it on the uh, rising edge of that waveform there. We'll up our sample rate a little bit. Oops. Get on here by 50 milliseconds per division. And we can see that there is a huge hole. There's a big open segment in this uh, commutator on this pump that we can see right there. So technically, you know, we should have about eight segments, eight to 10, depending on the fuel pump. Most fuel pumps have eight segments on a commutator. And you can see here, we have what, like three? It's kind of open and then a fourth one. So that's why this thing, we have to beat on the tank uh, to get this thing running. Uh, so he's gonna go back and replace the fuel pump. We can see it's also drawing, what's this thing drawing? About 10 amps there at the peak. That seems to be a tad bit high, let's see. So it's peaking out about 11 amps, 11.1 .1 amps. So pretty excessive. All right, so I just uh, sent him on his, sent him on his way. I'm gonna save this waveform. He's going to change the fuel pump, gonna bring it back. I think we did another video on this uh, where we showed this, but we don't really have a dedicated video, but this is a fantastic way. Like if you're wondering, you know, is the fuel pump on its way out? You got a customer with an intermittent no start. This is a fantastic way to check the general health of the fuel pump. Because technically, on you know the commutator on the motor, uh, on the electric motor, each time, you know it comes past, you're going to have a high amperage draw and then a low amperage draw, high amperage draw, low amperage draw. You know it's just going to be that constant wave. I think we a lot of us have seen you know electric motor waveforms, and that's what it looks like, and this is what it looks like with a huge open. I mean a massive open. I'm surprised it runs as good as it does. Um, but I think that's probably too why we have such a high current draw. Perhaps is because only. Well, like a not even a third of the of the electric motor is working 
So each time it comes to those segments, they have to work kind of extra hard. I may be way off on that, but that's just my guess. Uh, the other cool thing we can do is we can um, we can take and find our RPM on the pump, and we'll save this and we'll compare this when he comes back. So it appears to be 11 11.88 milliseconds, uh, a peak to peak on a you know a known known part of the waveform. Um, so we can take 60,000. We can divide that by 11.88, and that gives us 50-50. So that's our RPMs. 5,050 RPMs is what that pump is turning, and uh, we can compare this to the new when it comes back with that, and uh, you know use this as kind of a, a quick tip. I really don't know the purpose of this video, to be honest with you. Other than the fact that I kind of like to save waveforms, good and bad. Like I say, guys, I know we've done other, you know, videos and tests and stuff showing fuel pump current and finding opens. I think we did. I think the last one we did was on a Jeep, too. Uh, but I thought it would be nice just to have this little video, known bad, known good, show the difference, and I guess that's it. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's a bad idea. Uh, but up in the, uh, where the little eye pops up there on the screen, wherever that is, and down in the description, I'll put some links to other videos with uh, fuel pump current ramp testing and it's just a valuable tool and I really can't stress that enough you know with or without you know I mean we use a Pico here we use a Veras uh, lab scope and an amp clamp is an awesome way to see you know these huge holes in the uh, fuel pump circuit so you can you know quickly identify these you know intermittent starts or you know how come I bang on the fuel pump and it starts uh, you know is that a coincidence or you know what but this way here you can go back to the shop then confidently uh, replace this fuel pump and know hey you know it's not a obviously not a circuit problem you know it's not a ground problem it's not a power supply problem things pulling you know 11 amps uh, obviously it has a good power supply to it pumps junk and that's all there is to it so we're back with the jeep just like that miracle of modern television fuel pumps in it starts and runs now and we'll drive it back up so we can get our known good waveform off of this now we can shut the vehicle off without worry that it's going to start. We'll put our jumper in, and that, this is what I didn't show before, but typically what you do is you pull the fuse out of the vehicle, and then you just fuse you know, your jump wire with it so it's still a fuse circuit. I'll show you what I usually do. So I think we've used these in other videos, like in the Corvette video, but you know, a lot of times you can make your own jumper. Um, of course, these will only fit ATC fuses, this, this set here, but you know, you'd make yourself a set where you'd stick your, stick your fuse in either side of the jumper. And then you could loop these into the fuse box. And then, uh, you know, that would give you your loop for your amp clamp. Uh, you know, like that's for the bigger ATC style fuses or ATMs. I don't know. I can't keep them straight. There's too many of them. So we'll stick that in there. We'll get our Pico set up here. So we'll come here we'll select our probe that we're using. We're using the uh, 60 amp current clamp in a 20 amp mode and you can let it auto detect we'll put it in the 10 amp range now we'll set our set it up on 20 zero that bad boy out we'll go ahead and start it up show them. Oh, battery sounds a little weak oh shoot I got it I must have it in the wrong range again So what are we drawing there? Ah, so we're still drawing. Move our scale down. This still draws a pretty pretty fair amount of amperage. Was there a fuel filter on this, Sheldon? Yeah. Se is there fuel filter separate from the pump? Mm -hmm. Did you change that too? Yeah. You did? Okay. So typically, just kind of general rule, you get about one amp per 10 PSI. So right now we're on about nine amps. Uh, must be just the nature of the beast. Uh, Cause I assume this engine probably only runs 50 pounds fuel pressure or something like that. But this is a good looking amperage waveform here. So now what we'll do is we'll stop this. Let's let's make sure we're getting a, getting a good. Oops, wrong button there, fella. We'll, we'll jump our sample rate up here. Make sure we're getting good resolution. All right, you can go ahead and shut it off there, shovel. Calculator here, 
So we can see we've got nice, now it's a brand new pump, so you, sometimes you won't get like these beautiful, steady looking, you know, commutator humps, but this, this is pretty good. And we can see, we can verify if we can find two that are the same. Like I say, we should have an eight segment pump here. So there's one. Like that's the other. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then it starts over. And we can see we've got our delta is six milliseconds. So we'll take our calculator here. We can figure out the RPMs on this pump. So we'll take 60,000 and we can divide that by 6.843. And RPMs on this pump is 8,768 RPMs, where our other pump is only running about 5,050, if I remember right. And that's what that looks like, folks. And that's using your scope to, de to determine whether or not your fuel pump is uh, on its way out. There's a big nasty over there. Where in the thunder did we leave off? Um, let's see, we discussed about measuring your RPM. Uh, and <laughs> I guess we don't have to. Yeah, so I'm still getting used to the Pico. So look down here. So this is fun. Uh, I'm not sure if we can move this. But down here we show, uh, it gives our hertz, gives our frequency. It's 146.1 hertz, but it also tells us 8,768.2 RPMs did the math for us. But good thing we could at least check to see if our math was right. Uh, and, it, and it was. <laughs> so that's kind of a neat option, I guess, if you have a Pico. And uh, pardon my ignorance for uh, not being 100% familiar with this tool. But we can do this, we can grab. I saved our other one as a reference waveform. And uh, so we can take a look at our our other one here. We kind of kind of overlay them, and you guys can see see how that works. So that's pretty uh, pretty slick. Um, I don't know, just for for what it, for what it's worth. And you can see how many missing segments now we have. You know, measuring these on the you know the same time basis here. I don't know if we change. Yep, so yeah, so both of them changed, man. This, this Pico is awesome, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> this makes the Paris look like a kid's toy. Um, did I just say that out loud? Oh, well, it kinda does, really. I mean, the features on this tool are phenomenal. And like I said, I'm still getting used to it, but this is a pretty cool feature where you have these reference waveforms, you know, particularly if you have, you know, you're doing like camp crank stuff, knowing good, knowing bad, you just lay them over and be like, well, there's your problem, lady. Uh, pretty plain as day. Pretty cool. Displays RPM, which I didn't know, just learned. And, uh, you know, we've got, uh, you know, the ability to do reference waveforms, which is pretty awesome too. And it's particularly looking at a situation like this so you guys can see how big of a gap and how many little commutator segments we were missing, you know, in these, uh, in this waveform in, you know, one revolution in 360 degrees uh, of that pump. So, pretty slick. So that's it guys, I'm gonna take care of the Pico. What an awesome tool as I continue to grow and discover uh, all of its abilities. And then uh, you have to excuse my inabilities for not knowing all of it yet, but uh, we'll get better as time goes on and be able to use it a little more efficiently in all of its features. And not have to whip out the calculator when it does the calculation for you. Obviously as we know now, so we know that for next time. Uh, so hopefully you learned a little bit, you got to play with the Pico. Uh, for just a smidge there and we got to see how you could 100% make the call on a fuel pump or on an intermittent start um, You know just like if a customer came in it was an intermittent start, but it was starting for you It takes what it takes like just a couple minutes realistically To grab a jumper get a current ramp on the fuel pump and see what, what's it look like can you give a You know give an assessment on your fuel pump just with a current clamp and saying yeah, it's pulling this many amps and you know, oh, look at that little segment there. Same thing with like blower motors that intermittently work, uh, you know, cooling fans, anything like that. I mean, if there is an open in uh, in the motor, you're gonna see it. Uh, you know, just clear as day as you guys seen there. So that's it. We'll leave it at that. Uh, Google Plus, Facebook.
check us out there. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't, and you want to stay up to date as we learn this different scope and face all kinds of automotive challenges uh, here and there, everywhere. So thanks for watching.